Hello students, today we are going to learn the third poem of your course, Keeping Quiet, written by Pablo Neruda. Let me brief you what are we going to learn in this lesson. In this lesson, I am going to introduce you to the writer of this poem, Pablo Neruda. A short introduction of the poet will be given. Then I am going to tell you the theme of this poem. I am going to summarize the poem for you. I am going to introduce you all to the poem. Alright, a short summary. Then I am going to teach you the poem in detail, line by line and simultaneously I am going to tell you the word meanings and the poetic devices that have been used in the poem. Alright, to begin with let me introduce you to the writer of this poem, Pablo Neruda. Pablo Neruda is the pen name of Niftali Ricardo Reis Basalto. He took birth in the year 1904 on 12th July in Chile. He started writing at a very young age. He took up his pen name Pablo Neruda in the memory of a Czechoslavic writer Jan Neruda in the year 1920. And he contributed few articles for the journal Selva Ostro. Until his death in the year 1973, on 23rd September, he continued to stay alive in political as well as social arena as he was a politician. All right, Forced to stay inside and outside Chile due to his political views, political uh, activities, then diplomatic assignments, he continued to stay a prolific writer. All his poetry bears a stamp of his political activities and are an expression of his repression during his exile. Canto General D. Chile is an epic poem written by Pablo Neruda uh, about the entire Southern American continent, its people, its language, its nature, its historical destiny, everything. And Pablo Neruda was conferred with Nobel Prize in the year 1971. So this was a small introduction of the writer Pablo Neruda. Now the poem children. Uh, this poem, in this poem, of course Pablo Neruda was critical about any political or social uh, oppression, all right? And this poem calls for an introspection. Now what do you mean by introspection? Introspection is looking into our own selves and seeing what is right and what is wrong. Whatever we are doing is right or wrong, right? So this poem calls for an introspection for all those individuals who have divided themselves on the basis of race, nationalities and language. Clear? This poem has been presented in the form of an activity where the writer had implored, implored everyone, requested everyone to stay quiet and still. Do not speak and do not do anything, right? And he, you know, uh, wants this to break the shackles of discrimination, to, you know, uh, create a feeling of brotherhood, equality, and to even stop the wars, violent, uh, violent activities, clear? And he wants everybody to be equal. The theme of this poem is, uh, if the speech is silver, then silence is golden. The writer here demands uh, the necessity. Here is telling us the necessity of live and let live. Here in this poem, the writer is asking everyone to uh, count till 12 and keep quiet. Why is he asking everyone in this poem to count till 12 children? Because 12 may be the zodiac signs. We have 12 zodiac signs. 12 may be the number in the clock, all right? 12 may be the months of the year, 12 may be the hours of the day, right? So it can be any. So he had used the number 12 and he is saying that he is imploring everyone to count till 12 and stay quiet and stay still. Why is he asking everyone to stay quiet? Because we are different because of our languages. We are different from one another because of our languages. Someone speaks English, someone speaks Punjabi, someone Rajasthani, someone Tamil, and we are different, right? Because of our languages. If you're not going to speak any language, will we be different from each other? No, right? So he doesn't want us to speak any language. He doesn't want us to speak any language. And he even 
wants everyone to be still. Still means not doing anything. Why? Because we are different because of our work also. Someone is a businessman, someone is a fisherman. So everyone is different because of their work also, right? So he doesn't want anyone to speak anything and he doesn't want anyone to do anything, to stay still. Why is he wanting this? Because he says that if everyone is going to be silent and do nothing, that will be an exotic moment. Exotic, strange, unusual, yet full of peace and tranquility. All right. He wants everyone to be still and that will be an exotic moment when everybody will be able to introspect and see what they are doing is right or wrong. Clear? Sometimes we do not concentrate on, on our own selves also. He had given an example of a, uh, a person who gathers salt. A person who gathers salt never concentrates on his own self. He doesn't take care of his own self. And if he's going to stay quiet and still, he will be able to concentrate on his hands, isn't it? Then he had given the example of a fisherman. The fisherman who is an exploiter who kills so many fishes and whales will stop doing that. He will not harm any fish, any whale, isn't it? So here he had given the examples of different people and he doesn't want all this to happen. He wants everyone to, you know, uh, stay quiet and that stillness and that silence will create equality, all right? We will think everyone is equal and a feeling of brotherhood will generate. All right, so here the writer is telling and asking and imploring and requesting everyone to stay still. Then he's saying that if everyone will stay still, then, uh, you know, there will be no wars that will take place. No chemical wars, all right? And no war, green wars. What do you mean by green wars? People are continuously exploiting nature. They are continuously exploiting the resources, isn't it? And the writer doesn't want that. He wants everyone to, you know, uh, think, introspect what is right, what is wrong. Clear? The, all the wars will stand still. Harmony will prevail. Brotherhood will prevail. Clear? So here he is saying that the wars which leaves no survivors, right? The war, after war, maybe the country is winning or losing, but there are no survivors left to enjoy even the victory, right? So he wants everyone to, you know, uh, enjoy their lives, to live a healthy life, live and let live, as I told you, is the theme of this poem, children. So he is, you know, wanting everyone to not do anything so that the wars will stand still. But here he is saying that this activity should not be mistaken as a total inactivity on the earth. People should not take it as if he is requesting for total inactivity, that he doesn't want anyone to do anything. He's just wanting people to stop for some time and introspect. He's not asking everyone to stay quiet forever. All right. And there he has given an example of earth. Earth also dies and then again takes birth in the form of autumn and spring season, isn't it? In one we see the, all the leaves shed, die and another, uh, you know, uh, the new leaves uh, come out. The new leaves take birth on trees, isn't it? So he had given an example of earth, like how earth dies and takes birth again. In the same way, if we are going to stay si uh, quiet, if we are not going to speak anything, of course, that will make us think. And when we're going to again resume our work, clear, then we're again going to, you know, do our work that time, we will do our work with better thinking. A feeling of brotherhood will prevail 
everywhere. People will be able to think about others and their own selves also because during introspection, they will realize what are they doing. So this is a small poem, children, demanding introspection and retrospection. All right, children. So this was a small summary of this poem, Keeping Quiet, written by Pablo Neruda. Now we are going to learn this poem in detail, uh, line by line, and simultaneously, I'm also going to tell you the word meanings. As I told you, the title of this poem is Keeping Quiet, all right? Uh, every, he wants everyone, the writer is uh, requesting everyone to stay quiet so that he or she may introspect and, you know, uh, see what are they doing. And if you are going to stay silent, as I told you, if the speech is silver, then the silence is golden, clear? Now here, if we are speaking, that is all right. But if you are going to stay silent, then we will be able to judge ourselves better. All right. So here, he, the title of the poem is suggesting everyone to stay quiet so that everyone is equal and everyone is, uh, you know, everyone feels the feeling of brotherhood. Keeping Quiet by Pablo Neruda. I have already introduced you to Pablo Neruda. He was a politician and a writer. Now we will count to 12 and we will all keep still. Why is the writer requesting everyone to count to 12? Why had he chosen the number 12? It can be the zodiac sign, it can be the 12 months, it can be the 12 hours of the day. All right, it can be the, you know, uh, the 12 numbers in the clock. That's why he must have chosen the number 12. And he says that while counting till 12, everyone is going to stay still and quiet. Everyone is going to stay still, doing nothing and speaking nothing. I told you why is he asking to stay still? Because languages separate us from one another. It creates difference. It creates discrimination. All right. It, uh, you know, uh, bounds us in the shackles of, dis uh, you know, discrimination, right? So, uh, here writer is asking everyone to stay still so that nobody is different from some other person. We are different because, we, uh, because of our work. Someone is very rich, someone is very poor. That creates a difference. Languages create difference, isn't it? So, here the writer is asking everyone to stay still so that everyone is equal and can enjoy brotherhood for once on the face of earth let's not speak any language let's stop for a second and let's not move our arms so much here what is the writer demanding writer is demanding or requesting everyone to stay still why so that everyone is uh, equal when we are not going to speak any language then we are equal. If you are not going to do any work, moving arms here has two meanings, children. One is moving our hands and doing our work, right? And arms can also be taken as weapons, right? Armaments, right? So here he is saying that nobody is going to fight with someone else. Clear? If we are quiet, if we are still, if we are not doing anything, if you are not speaking anything, then no words will take place because no one is going to move their weapons or armaments, right? And here the arms can be for general work also. Clear? This word arm has two meanings. One is the hands and another is the weapons armaments, right? So here he is saying that if we are not going to do anything, there will be uh, two results. One is we will not be different on the basis of work and another no words will take place. Alright, so here in this paragraph, we have seen that Pablo Neruda is imploring everyone to stay quiet and stay still. The silence will help us to introspect and think about everyone. When there will be no language spoken on the space of earth, then no one will be different from anyone else. A feeling of equality and brotherhood will prevail, isn't it? And if no one is going to do the work, we are different on the basis of our work also. So if we are not doing any work, then definitely we are equal. We are not fighting with each other. Next paragraph, it would be an exotic moment, unusual, strange, yet 
beautiful moment all right so he's saying that if nobody is going to speak anything then it will surely be an exotic moment then without rush without engines now here we are not rushing in the rat race of this world children we are running we are not concentrating on our own selves we are you know running after success running to uh, you know achieve our goals but sometimes we we may adopt inappropriate measures to do that to achieve success to achieve our goals but if you're going to stay quiet still and if you're going to you know introspect we will realize our mistakes or we will even have better ideas to move for further isn't it so this silence is productive then without engines no work will take place we'll get time for ourselves also right it would uh, we will all we would all be together a feeling of togetherness will also prevail right that we all are together when no one is doing anything we must have experienced this in covid 19 in this pandemic right in this pandemic we were so much together the family members were spending time with each other as no one was going out right that was a kind of counting till 12 and staying quiet doing nothing isn't it in this covid we have experienced this that when we were doing nothing we could concentrate we could think what are we doing many of us must have done that many of you must have done that all right in a sudden strangeness of course that moment when no one is speaking anything it would be strange clear it would be very unusual but still keeping quiet will be productive it will help us have peace and tranquility it will help us introspect whatever we are doing is right or wrong clear so uh, this is uh, this will make us land in sudden strangeness fisherman in the cold sea would not harm whales now here the fishermen are the you can be you know it can be a symbol of all those people who are exploiters all right fisherman can be a symbol of exploiters people who are harming nature people who are exploiting the resources they will stop and they will not harm anybody they will you know stop that exploitation against animals against nature against humans so here if no one is doing anything then fisherman will not harm the fishes or the whales in the cold sea then a the man gathering salt would look at his hurt hands now here what is the writer saying to and the writer is saying that the people who are poor sometimes in order to earn their daily bread they do not concentrate on their own self the body right they keep on working continuously they harm their own body and if they will get time if they will do nothing then they will be able to concentrate on their self all right they will be able to look after their body properly so here the example of a person who gathers salt has been given where when he will stop and introspect then he will be able to concentrate on his hurt hands isn't it now this these are the three paragraphs that we have studied children let us study the poetic devices there is no uh, uh, difficult word in these three paragraphs exotic means strange unusual beautiful moment and here we are going to cons- uh, study the poetic devices or the literary devices that have been used first of all alliteration what do you mean by alliteration children alliteration is occurrence of same letter in the adjacent words or closely related words all right so when there is a there is a line in which two adjacent words all right or in two or more than two words that are closely related the first letter of those words is same clear so there it is alliteration here we have two adjacent words we will and the first letter of both these words is w and is a consonant all right in alliteration the letter 
that is there, the first letter which is same, should be consonant. So here W is a consonant, alright? So here the uh, poetic device alliteration has been used. Few other alliterations that have been used is once on, right? Then we have uh, V, word WW, and then we have his, hurt, hands, H, 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 three uh, consonants used adjacently. Then we have uh, just these alliterations. Sudden strangeness, S, S. Alright. So here, when two or more than two words which are adjacent or are closely related, the same letter occurs in the beginning, right? It is alliteration. The occurrence of the same letter in the beginning of the word, in the two adjacent words or closely related words is known as alliteration. So here alliterations have been used. Antithesis. When there is a sentence and it produces two contrast statements. Alright. When there is a sentence in which, uh, you know, two statements are there and they both are contradictory to each other in contrast with each other like day and night. Alright, now here day and night are two different things, contrasting words, right? So here in the first two lines, what is there? It's the same statement, right? Now in the same statement, there are two different thoughts. Count till 12 and keep still. How can a person count till 12 also and keep still also? Are these two contradictory thoughts here? Yes. So what literary device has been used, children? Antithesis. All right. So antithesis has been used here. Now, uh, repetition. When the word, phrase, all right, when a word or a phrase is repeat, repeated in a line or in a paragraph, then it is known as repetition. Now here, without, without, sing, uh, single word, without, same kind of word, without, has been used twice. So what literary device has been used, children? Repetition. And uh, here, cold sea, fishermen harming whales in a cold sea is creating an image in our mind. Alright, so here the symbol and imagery both had been used, children. Symbol, as I told you, fisherman is the symbol of exploiter, right? It exploits uh, the fishes and in other words, it can also be said that fisherman is an example given here for all the exploiters, right? So symbol, then it is imagery, a kind of image. What is imagery? Imagery is uh, what we imagine through our senses. It can be an auditory image. It can be a visual image. So here, a visual image is created in our minds when a writer frames a sentence in such a way that a visual or an auditory image is created in our minds, right? So here, this sentence is creating a visual image in our mind where the right, the fisherman is harming whales. All right, children. So I guess these three paragraphs are very much clear to you all. You can pause the video and copy down the poetic devices that have been used. All right. Now students, let us continue with the other paragraphs. In the first three paragraphs, we've already studied that how he is demanding, he is requesting, he's asking everyone to stay quiet without speaking anything and without doing anything for just a small period of time so that we may introspect and we may retrospect, uh, you know, our work, our deeds, all right? Uh, it will also give us the rejuvenation of thoughts, all right, it will give us the transition of thoughts, clear. It will, uh, you know, make us land into the ecstatic, uh, you know, moments of life, to enjoy the ecstatic moments of life. So here we have studied that how the writer is wanting everyone to stay quiet for some time, whether it be the exploiters, whether it be the poor people who are continuously, you know, uh, working hard, to live their life, to earn their daily bread and are not concentrating on their 
good selves on their emotional selves is that clear so here we are going to continue with the other paragraphs also children uh, those who prepared green wars here who are those children those here are all the politicians the scientists the statesmen the rich people who are exploiting uh, nature and resources to fulfill their selfish needs right and those people who are preparing green wars green war man in order to fulfill his selfish motive wages war against nature all right they do not think about nature and they wage war against nature this is green wars then wars with gas and wars with fire now here the scientific advancement that is taking place in this world the atomic the nuclear bombs being created right they are referred to as the wars with gas and the wars with fire the big companies that are actually uh, destroying our nature right so these are those people who are waging war and are not concentrating towards you know the nature towards humans they need to stop they need to you know retrospect and introspect because they do not understand that this you know uh, their this advancement this technological advancement through this technological advancement they are treading the path of destruction isn't it and they are on the verge of extinction they will extinct right isn't it so through these wars they will they are actually taking them on the verge of extinction they are you know treading the path of destruction so they need to understand they need to stop this is victory without with no survivors even if the technological advancement take takes place will there be any survivor to enjoy that victory no all right everyone is going to die due to those chemicals that are released from the companies the the atomic and the nuclear bombs being created there will be no survivor all right so and walk about with their brothers in the shade doing nothing now here he is wanting everyone to enjoy in nature to give time to their emotional self they when they want to do anything when they want to prepare all those you know uh, weapons nuclear atomic weapons they want to indulge themselves in the you know uh, construction of all those harmful weapons then they will be able to in consider everyone as their brothers they will be able to walk hand in hand with their brothers and they will be able to enjoy that harmony all right so what i meant that this is the meaning of this paragraph children now what i want should not be confused with total inactivity now here the writer is warning everyone and is telling everyone that he should not be misunderstood by this activity as total inactivity it will the life is an ongoing process it has to move on isn't it now if we are going to you know uh, stand still do nothing then life will stop and the writer does not by any means wishes to stop everything in this world so he is saying that he is warning everyone he is putting everyone on alert that he should not be mistaken uh you know this activity should not be mistaken as a total inactivity or a total standstill because we have come in this life on this earth we have to continuously move we life is an ongoing process life is what it is about what is life children we cannot stop we have to go ahead we have to eat food we have to work we have to talk this is life we have to go on our work right but this activity is only for a short period of time where everyone will stay quiet for just a time when he is counting till 12 or when he or she is counting till 12 so this is for a very short period of time when the person will be able to enjoy that ecstatic moment that exotic moment that strangeness 
and will able be able to you know uh, generate a feeling of brotherhood within will everyone will consider everyone equal so this is the meaning of this activity and life is an ongoing process life is what is that means life is an ongoing process i want no trust with death so this activity should not be mistaken as a total standstill because if everyone is going to stand still do, doing nothing if everyone is going to you know be silent forever without doing anything the earth will be like a truck of death right truck uh, trucks with death all right everyone will be as if everyone has died so this activity should not be mistaken this activity should be you know uh, done uh, with a with an intention where we just need to think and you know uh, concentrate on our activities whether we are right or wrong we should concentrate uh, we should you know concentrate on our inner selves we should concentrate on our physical health we should concentrate on our emotional selves but not a total inactivity not a complete standstill not because life is an ongoing process we need to move on if we were not so single minded about keeping our lives moving now we as i told you in the previous paragraph also we are running in the rat race all right and we are continuously running without thinking about ourselves about people around us about our country about nature about humans and we are continuously running towards the advancement which is uh, which is actually leading us to the verge of extinction the technological advancement is somewhere harmful for us also and we need to recognize that all right so uh, we should not tread the path of destruction and to look at this point that we should not tread the path of destruction we need to introspect all right so uh, life should move on all right it should keep on going as i told it's an ongoing process so uh, but we should stop at times and we should introspect and retrospect and for once could do nothing perhaps a huge silence might interrupt this sadness humans do not think about their own selves sometimes as i told you as as an example has been given in the poem itself about a person who gathers salt now that person who is gathering salt is he looking at his hurt hands no he is not looking at his hurt hands isn't it but when he is going to do nothing he is going to stop and introspect he will be able to look at his hurt hands too right so a person who is sad within who is just achieving success is just running for that advancement technological advancement running after success will stop for a moment and think whether i am happy or not and if he is sad within that uh, introspect will break his sadness and he will be able to concentrate on his emotional self all right so so if he is not going to do anything then he will be able to concentrate on his uh, silence uh, that huge silence will be able to help him break his sadness which is within because in running running and running after work for family for success for dreams we do not uh, look into our own selves whether we are happy or sad so this huge silence might interrupt uh, that sadness within so this is the meaning of these three lines children and for if one could do nothing perhaps a huge silence might interrupt the sadness i have explained these lines of never understanding ourselves because we do not understand ourselves we just know one thing that we have to achieve success we have to achieve our goals we have to pursue our dreams but in that race are we concentrating on ourselves no we are not right are we thinking about ourselves is a fisher man is, is the fisher man thinking about fishes no is the poor person thinking about his hands no is the poor person thinking about his health no so this huge silence 
will help a person to even introspect about his sadness. He will concentrate whether he is happy or not. All right. And of threatening oneself will with death. Moving towards technological advancement is like treading the path of destruction and you know taking ourselves on the verge of extinction understanding this line if we are continuously going ahead with progress and that progress may also lead us to destruction clear creating atomic bombs nuclear bombs are they uh, you know helping us to keep people alive no they are harmful they are leading us towards destruction all right so uh, you know we are moving towards advancement without thinking that these things that we are creating that the scientists are creating may lead us to destruction may lead us to death to the doomsday all right when the day when the world will come to an end Perhaps the earth can teach us when everything seems dead and later proves to be alive. Now here there are two meanings children. If we can understand it through two meanings. One is that I told you in the beginning of the lesson when I was uh, summarizing the chapter to you all. I told you the autumn season, the spring season, the leaves fall, decay and uh, are alive again. The new leaves take birth, right? One can be that, that earth first of all goes ahead with, uh, you know, uh, autumn season then the spring season then the all the leaves share then the all leaves take birth so earth also gives time to itself but the another meaning of this line can be that you know we take birth from our own ashes isn't it life is an, a, a process that keeps on going and going we die all right then again new birth take takes place someone else takes birth so this life process is going on and on and on a person who is dying his soul takes a rebirth in some other body all right so earth is teaching us through this process also so if the life the if everyone's going to die then will no one take birth again no the births are continuously being taken isn't it so earth is also teaching us this process stop and take birth again stop and take birth again isn't it our own souls are taking rebirth from our own ashes right we are taking rebirth from our own ashes so perhaps the earth can teach us that uh, as everything seems dead and later pre uh, proves to be alive so two meanings i have told you one is the autumn uh, and the uh, spring season and the other the seasons that uh, there are the four seasons then we can also take it as like the life takes rebirth now i will count up to 12 and you keep quiet and i will go now he's saying that now he's leaving advising everyone to enjoy that ecstatic moment, to enjoy that exotic moment of togetherness, of brotherhood, of equality, all right, that will rejuvenate our thoughts, that will, you know, make our thoughts lively, that will, you know, uh, uh, help us in the transition of our mind. Our minds will be able to think again, maybe positively. All right, so this is the aim of the poet Pablo Neruda. I hope the poem is very much clear to everyone, children. And let us now uh, see the poetic devices. Repetition, words with, words with. I told you what is repetition. When a word or phrase or a sentence is repeated continuously in the paragraph or in, a, in the poem, it is known as repetition. Now these two words, word with, word with, has been repeated twice, so repetition. Alliteration, what is alliteration? Occurrence of the same letter or the same consonant sound at the beginning of two adjacent words or the two uh, or the words closely related, right? So here, WW sound, consonant sound is repeating in two adjacent words, right? So it is alliteration. Then C, C, consonant sound, being close, again, alliteration, great. Now, V word, W, W, again, alliteration. And an antithesis has again been used, children. Where, what is antithesis? I told you uh, where we learned count till 12 and stay still. Two contrasting thoughts, 
two contrasting statements in a single uh, two contrasting statements in a single line here also two contrasting statements in a single line had been given when everything seems dead later everything is alive how can something which is dead can again be alive that we can understand in a literary meaning right but here it is presenting two contrasting thoughts so it is antithesis there are no difficult words as such in the poem children so we have understood the poem i guess and uh, this here we complete the poem thank you